Hello, my name is Tina Sfera and I'm a functional manual therapist specializing in dance medicine PT, sports medicine PT, and orthopedics. I am here today to teach you how to participate in your own healing and how to manage pain and injury as well as recovery. And what I always tell my patients is that I'm going to teach you because you can't stay with me forever. And we need to empower you how to take care of some trigger points. In particular, I'm going to work on the upper back today. Now recovery, so we're not just talking about patients though, we're talking about wellness. And recovery is not just recovery from an injury, but recovery from, from our workouts, from our activities of daily living. And whether, so whether we're active or sedentary, muscles can get short and tight, trigger points can exist, they can, they can, and they can become chronic. So let me show you where the curves change in the spine. We have two very important areas where it changes from cervical to thoracic and from thoracic to lumbar. These junctional areas are susceptible to a lot of stress. So the upper back in particular is the foundation for our head, neck, and arms, and our heads weigh about 15 to 20 pounds really need a strong foundation for the cervical spine to support this 15 to 20 pound head. And quite often, because of our lifestyles and our workouts, we can develop chronic trigger points, which basically are knots in our muscles that just won't release without the hands of a skilled manual therapist. So, what what will then happen is it'll pull our shoulder blades or scapulae out of alignment and really affect other joints in the human kinetic chain in our spine, our shoulder joints, our neck. So these trigger points can become very uncomfortable, achy, sore, sometimes they vary day in and day out and sometimes we don't even know the knots are there. So what I'd like to do today is work with this ball to teach you how to create a strong foundation to work with for your head, neck, and arms. So with this pink ball, we're gonna release our own trigger points today, but for your information, the work of trigger point release is based on the work by Janet Travell, MD, and David Simmons, MD. They've done a lot of work in this area, and you can go ahead and Google that and get some really beautiful charts of where trigger points actually exist in your muscles. But the best thing to know is that you don't even need to look at a chart to feel where a trigger point is because you'll feel it whether it's via someone's hands on your body or using this ball on the wall, which I will demonstrate in a little bit. Some background with about the trigger points for you to know is that a trigger point is generally a tight band in the muscle or a tight knot in the band of muscle and it can be achy. Uh, sometimes you don't know it's there until you actually hit it. And what are some of the causes? Structural inadequacies like a scoliosis, one leg being lower than the other, postural inadequacies such as weakness because we have chronic trigger points and muscle spasms pulling us out of alignment, and even psychological factors such as stress. Who doesn't feel stress every now and then? So one thing we need to think about before doing this work is that it's important to really heat up the tissue and we're going to use some massage strokes first before we go deep into the trigger points. Another thing to realize are precautions. Please do not do any trigger point, deep trigger point work before a workout because the trigger points, releasing trigger points actually fatigues the muscle. And then we go into, if we go into a workout with an already fatigued muscle, injury can occur. And in dancers in particular, from all those studies, we see that the number one cause of injury in dancers is fatigue. So, that being said, let's take this ball to the wall and have some fun. So here we are at the wall with the ball placed in between the shoulder blades, definitely not on the spine. And here I am using some gentle massage techniques to go up and down, soften, loosen up, heat up the tissue before we go in for the tender spots. If it's not, it, you know, at any point in time, feel free to 
move the ball because you want to connect with a large area here. And I have to tell you, I'm very happy to be doing this right now because I have found some spots. They're a little lower. So at, at, after you feel you've really massaged an area and you've found the trigger point, hold. And then it's very important to do some breath work here, to breathe into it. Really, really breathe into it. So there's two, a couple of different techniques you could use to help facilitate the release of the trigger point. One might be a little motion, gentle head motion. Another might be some breath. Really just releasing into it, easing into it. Never go in too far until the body is ready and the body will let you know. So you might have to move your feet around, move the ball around. The trigger point for you might be up a little higher in a typical area, the levator scapulae. Google that and you'll see where it attaches on the shoulder blade. Now recovery does not just pertain to recovery from injuries, it refers to recovery from muscle use and can really be applied in both circumstances for healing and prevention. Now the area that I've chosen to work on today are the calves which are comprised of the gastro-soleus complex. Basically, it's two muscles that share a common attachment point at the Achilles tendon, the gastro, which crosses the knee, and the soleus, which does not. Typically, there are two trigger points in both of the gastro heads. One can try to release those points by pressure between the posterior thighs and gastrocs. Sometimes, due to the very contoured surfaces, it may not be possible to sit directly on the trigger point with the ball. You can also use it as a soft tissue mobilization tool at any point in the muscle bellies. It might be nice to work your way down by pulling the muscles away from the bone, which also can get into the deep fascia. Ease into it. It's important to relax into the tissue, applying the least amount of force at first and waiting for the neuro signaling cues to push deeper into the tissue as you feel it release. It will become less tender, allowing for a restorative effect. Position changes will help you go deeper and create lasting effects. It's important to stretch after you've done one of these deep tissue workouts and also to drink lots of water. Now, precautions, remember, please do not do this prior to a workout because the muscles will be fatigued and fatigue can create injury. So relax, feel good, and enjoy. Thank you for your time and also remember that you can facilitate your wellness.